tonight's topic, building a young adult ministry. And I'm so excited that we have um, uh, a special guest. His name is Dominic Rafa, and he's the associate pastor at Brookfield Bible Church in Holbrook. So welcome in, Dominic. Hey, how are we doing? Good, good. And tonight, Dominic's not even in New England. (laughs) He's in uh, Indiana. Is that right? Yes, I'm in currently in Indianapolis right now. Indianapolis, Indiana. So anyway, he we're excited because he's getting married in a few weeks. So congratulations on that, thank, Dominic. Thank you very much. Very yeah. excited. So Dominic, tell us a little bit about you. I'm going to disappear as you do that, and then you can get into content, and I will do just as I said. I'll monitor that chat, and then we'll chat on the other side. Awesome. Well, yeah. So uh, thank you, Sandy, again, for uh, letting me have this opportunity to be able to just share the little wisdom that I have uh, when it comes to young adults. So uh, a little bit about me real quick. If if you didn't see the last webinar that I was able to be a part of, this was kind of the second part to uh, young adults in the church to where the first one we talked about young adults in the church and what we want to see and what young adults want to see in the church. And I'll kind of recap that a little bit. Today, we're going to be talking about how to build a young adult ministry practically and what that looks like. And and the two-parter kind of feeds off of one another. So make sure that you go back and revisit the first one because it'll share a lot of light into the second one. But again, I'll do some recapping, but a little bit more about me. Yeah, so working at Brookville Bible Church, I'm the associate pastor. I'm over our discipleship and our small groups. I'm also over our young adult ministry and our youth ministry as well. Uh, Put on a lot of different hats right there. Um, we have this thing. So on the South shore, Massachusetts, that's where Holbrook is just underneath Boston. We have a thing called South shore gathering. It's where a bunch of young adult ministries or a bunch of young adults in different churches will get together because a lot of churches don't have young adult ministries and uh, we'll get together once a month and we'll worship, we'll pray and we'll build community. And it's really cool and exciting opportunity. So if you're watching this and you're on the South shore, Hey, even if you're in Boston, we'd love to be able to talk with you and see if we can get you plugged in there. Uh, but God's just doing some really cool things through that. And also at the same time, um, you know, getting married to Sandy said, so I'm getting married uh, May 19th and pretty excited about that, but enough about me. So, uh, so to recap on our first, on our first webinar, we talked about the different things that young adults are looking for in a church. And I'm very against the attractional church movement to where it's, Hey, we want people to come, come, come. And if they come, then they'll experience Jesus. I feel that what we should be doing as believers is we should be Jesus to other people. So it doesn't necessarily mean that they need to come into our church to experience Jesus. We should be able to go to our neighbors and we should, and we should make sure that they are uh, experiencing Jesus through our words, through our actions. So how how, what, how that relates to young adults is we capitalize on relationships. We need to have relationships with young adults. So whether you have young adults in your church or whether you don't, um, the biggest thing is going to be building relationships with people. And there were three P's that I left us with on the last webinar, which was to pray over young adults, pour into young adults, and to platform young adults. So to pray over young adults, I was asking like, hey, who are the young adults that you know? And they might not be at your church. They might be, you know, the colleges next door. They may be the grandsons or the kids or whatever it may be. Are you praying over the young adults that you currently know? And then, um, or hey, praying for God to just bring them out of the woodwork, even if you don't know some. Um, pouring into young adults. We talked about that you have to build a relationship with these young adults so that you guys make sure that it's just, it's giving and taking. We need to make sure that we're listening but we're also building a relationship enough to pour into that. So sometimes it's a little scary because I know we touched on the last time, which I believe was last month, like we are always kind of like, well, we don't understand the generation, you know, that comes after us. And even for me, I'm 24 and there's some middle schoolers right now that I'm dealing with where I'm like, I just do not get it. But the point is, is you don't necessarily have to get it. You just have to, you know, you just have to build a relationship with them. And then it, and then you just go with the flow. That's really what it is. When you're pouring into young adults, you're discipling them. But that doesn't only mean that you're just shoving things down their throat. It means, hey, let's talk. Hey, tell me about your job first. You know, tell me about what you enjoy, what you're passionate about. And then conversation about religion, conversation about relationship with Jesus, conversation about why they don't want to get plugged into a church or why they love being plugged into the church will come up. But you need to 
have a relationship and authenticity with that. And then lastly, we talked about platforming young adults, which is the scariest part, because when you platform young adults, you are literally trusting God that, uh, you know, that, you know, you're just kind of trusting God with those young adults. And of course, when you're pouring into young adults, there's a discipleship factor, there's training, there's equipping, there's leading, but there's also this piece of you're handing off the keys. And what young adults really, especially we're seeing a lot more, when I'm speaking on young adults, I'm kind of talking a little bit like high schoolers all the way to like, I would say young families. So we're, ta we're talking on Gen Z pretty much to, I would say, probably the later millennial stage right there, earlier earlier millennial stage to where these guys, they want to feel that they are creating value and that they are valued and in it, they're making a difference and an impact, which I feel like we all kind of necessarily want to be a part of. But the, what we want to, what we want to create is this thing of like, Hey, we're going to trust you and we're going to build you up. We're going to equip you. We're going to lead you to be able um, to do what you feel God has called you to do. So if you're passionate about running a youth ministry and your church doesn't have one, but you have this young person that's on fire for it, hey, let's go do it. And there might be some hiccups and there might be some mistakes, but sometimes it gets messy and you live and learn. I mean, we've all been young before. We've all had ideas where I know even with Pastor Sean, who's my senior pastor, is kind of like, oh dear, Dom, you know, I don't know about it, but hey, if you're on fire for Jesus and, you know, you're thinking it through, I'll be right there with you to coach you, but let's go do it. You go do it and let's see what God can do through it. So, yeah. So with all that, we want uh, for young adults, they need to be prayed over, poured into, platforms. And from all of that, what you'll start to see in your church is when you start to give up these traditions and these, and these golden cows to reach people for Jesus. Again, we don't compromise on the gospel. We don't compromise on solid doctrine. But when we start to say, hey, do we really need to do things this way if we're just seeing a lot of gray-headed people in our church and the doors are closing? There might be something wrong because God calls us as ministers of the gospels to reach every age, every demographic. So as we switch into practical steps, of how to build a young adult ministry. This isn't gonna happen overnight. Um, in previous, so I've been able to, by God's grace, been able to serve in Ohio and be a youth pastor and a young adult pastor. Then in California, I was doing young adult ministry and youth ministry and in that, you know, these things take time. And uh, hey, if the Holy Spirit moves and it happens overnight, great. But I think you need to kind of switch the, switch the, mindset right now and say, this might require a church culture change. This might require us as us as a church body to rethink how we do church or what church looks like or where we even meet. Because the utmost important thing as we have been given by Jesus Christ is to go there for and make disciples. So if we're not doing that, we're just seeing a lot of the same people that are starting to get old and our, you know, like, I think we might be doing something wrong. So how do we build a young adult ministry? And if, in these, in the first three steps of praying, uh, plat, uh, excuse me, praying, pouring into and platforming, this is going to kind of look similar into how we build a practical young adult ministry. So first, pray, pray, pray. There's currently some young adults right now that I'm interacting with that don't go to our young adult ministry that aren't involved in our church, yet I meet with them outside of church walls because they're just not comfortable and they don't and they don't have it carved into their schedule because they don't think it's an important thing. But as we're building this relationship and as we're just kind of building that authenticity, that genuine relationship. I'm just praying over these people. I've been meeting with them for six months and they still have yet to, uh, you know, come to church, but I don't look at it as a loss. Um, what I do is I continue to text them. I continue to reach out to them, but I'm continuing to pray for them. So I'm just going to ask you kind of, as we said in the recap, who are the young adults right now in your church that, you know, um, maybe are grand grandkids of someone, maybe there's a college right beside you. I was just on the BCNE network and I'm seeing there's even these coordinators in different states that you could reach out to and say, hey, you know, do you know who I can connect with or other churches that are wanting to reach young adults? It's like this can be a partnership and you're praying over all these things, but this means you have to be active. You just can't say, hey, well, we're going to sit in our seats. We're going to sit in our pews and we're just going to pray that God brings them. A lot of the time it says, go, go, therefore, and make disciples. And there's an action piece in that of we're called to go. We can't just always sit. So in that, are you actively seeking out maybe some Christian clubs that are meeting at a, uh, um, a campus 
right now, a college campus that might be near you? Or are there young adults currently plugged into your church that are longing for community? And again, we don't want to make it a silo. That's one of the biggest things that you don't want to do in young adult ministry. You don't want to make it a silo to where they're doing their own thing. In young adult ministry, what it, what we're going to talk about is integration. You want to make sure that they're a part of the church body in every aspect and every way. But as young adults, hey, you know, if you're single or something and you have nothing to do, like you're going to crave some community. So this is why it's important to pray about a young adult ministry. So pray, 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 and you're going to seek them out outside of scheduled church times. So instead of handing out flyers or whatever, maybe, um, you know, here's one big thing. I was just talking to my fiance about this and, and what she was saying is for young adults, um, for their young adult ministry, what happened is they would know that a young adult was going through a breakup, like, or one of them was going off to college. And to let them know that they loved and cared for them, they would make care packages, or um, they would give them a call or shoot them a text. So maybe there's a there's a college um, campus right now that you can think of where you could probably maybe talk with Campus Life or something. And they would, and you could hand out, hand out like free chocolate bars or something like that, just to build relationships. And you're not saying come to my young adult ministry for, remember, you're emphasizing on the relationship to where it's, Hey, you know, it's great. You know, it's great meeting you. Here's a chocolate bar. And just always know that we're here for you. We love you. And you might have to do that for a year or two years to be on that campus or to be in that coffee shop where you guys as a Bible study are intentionally meeting where young adults meet and maybe conversations happen through the barista or something, but you're just kind of being a little sneaky about how you do things, but also you're not forcing anything. So be intentional. Be authentic. Don't make it about trying to bring people into your church. Make it about trying to bring people into God's kingdom. So you're calling maybe local Christian clubs. You're partnering with other churches. You're maybe contacting BC and E to see if there's any other churches that are wanting to do something, whatever that might look like. Now, let's say you do have young adults in your church or um, that aren't really involved and you're trying to get them involved. One of the big things to do in how to create a young adult ministry is to hand the keys to them and say, hey, you know, you've been coming here for a while and, um, you know, you have a passion to lead or maybe they don't even know that they have a passion to lead or maybe they're not. They want to hand it off to someone else, but you use the young adults around you and maybe you meet with them at first for a couple of times and you have a Bible study or you just say, hey, why don't you guys start getting together? You know, here, I'll give you guys some money for some pizzas, you know, I'll buy some board games for you. Just start getting together and we want to make sure we're, we're supporting you guys. So in that process, what you're doing is you're making young adults own it. When young adults own it, they run with it. Now, uh, don't micromanage. There's always that thing of, well, hey, I need to make sure they're doing this, this, this right. Or, you know, I need to make sure that they're not ruining anything in the rooms. Again, it's going to get messy. Now, um, rewatch the first webinar because I always do say, like, make sure we're training them up in doctrine and and a good, solid foundation of what the gospel is. But also we have to trust the process as well. And if this person loves Jesus um, and you're discipling and you're pouring into them, a lot of the time it's it's just going to work out to where there'll be more fire. And then when young adults are getting together with young adults, something good and powerful is going to happen. So when we create this ministry, what we do is we want to first off create a welcoming environment. We're making it informal. You know, you want to make it comfortable. You want to make your students lead it, as I said, because peers are able to reach peers better. I always tell my middle schoolers, you're going to be a way better witness to your peers than I'm ever going to be. So instead of always inviting them to come to church, as I was talking about earlier, man, why don't you just go hang out with them and grab a coffee with them? And of course, I would love to meet, I would love to meet your friends or, you know, whenever I'm talking to other young adults, like you have the relationship with them, they're going to be the point person. So when peers are reaching peers, extremely important. And you just, again, trust that process. You don't micromanage it. So maybe they might need their own room in the church if you have it, or maybe they just might need a host for maybe someone in your church. It's like, Hey, every Thursday night, I would love to have young adults come over. And what a beautiful way for, again, older people in your church to be able to mingle and have a relationship with the younger people in your church. And just every Thursday night or every other Thursday night, now I'd recommend every week because that's how you build momentum. But when you're first kicking off every other week, Boom, you have young adults that are wanting to get together. You have a young adult that's on top of it that's saying, hey, we're going to be doing this, this, and that night. And maybe it's a weekly thing to where it's three weeks. Um, it's it's uh, diving into the word. It's a Bible study discussion. Maybe they're going through a book. But then another week, it's a game night to where it's very relational. And the friends invite friends from work and that kind of thing. 
Um, next, you want to brand it. Is what I don't know, Sandy, if you have any questions on that, but I'll keep going just in case. No, we got a question. Okay, hit me. Okay, the question is this. So they love your idea about, um, you know, all the relationship stuff. So they're saying that they are texting, do group tests, texts and all of that. Um, but they're, people aren't responding. So do you think it's pushy if you text them individually? How would you so, handle that? So, yeah. So one of those, so that's the other weird thing. So with texting nowadays, I was actually just talking to my grandparents about this because my, um, with young adults, it's tricky. There's different ways to where some young adults, it really depends on their engagement. If you know that they're not as engaged, then probably text them every week would maybe be too much. But if you know someone that's engaged in your church and you're shooting a text of how can I be praying for you and they're not responding, maybe they just communicate in a different way. Maybe on Sunday, you just say it in person and then it's like, hey, would you want to go grab a coffee? Um, so I would, get, I, I would gauge the involvement to where for those people that aren't inside our church walls, I'll text them every three, probably once every three weeks, and they'll respond because it's not as often. Um, okay. So I would, you would just have to kind of, you know, know who you're dealing with. But then I've had some young adults that are like, hey, man, sorry, I don't respond to your text. I'm just busy, but I really appreciate, you know, because I always know you're there for me. So maybe that's just a conversation you might need to have with them in a non-awkward way of why aren't you responding to my text, <laughs> you know? How about the old fashioned way, like a card? Man, so uh, cards are low key. Uh, they're like underrated. I think that cards go a long way um, just to let you know that they're thinking, uh, that you're thinking about them. So if you pair that with texting and that kind of stuff, Doug, don't, you know, know your audience, know who it is, because young adults can definitely, as anyone could be, probably turned off by like, okay, this person keeps hitting me up and now he's sending me cards or whatever. But yeah, know your audience, but cards are definitely a good thing too. Okay, great. You're all set. Okay, cool. So hopefully that answered it. If it didn't, let me know. Um, so so let's talk about, so, you know, we were talking about creating that welcoming environment. So again, maybe they might need their own room or a host family. So now let's talk about branding it. Um, branding it is going to be really interesting because we're not trying to create the attractional model of if it sounds cool and looks cool, but specifically with young adults nowadays, um, I'll always hear like, hey, that's a vibe. And what that means is like, it's it's basically like you're creating an atmosphere that just you want to be a part of. Um, and that's created with authenticity. That's created with genuine relationships. But you can even capitalize on just having a cool environment to be able to do these things. Maybe that's in how your font is. Maybe that's the name. Maybe the name draws, you know, because, you know, I love some older, uh, you know, I love some... Um, some churches to where they'll want to be reaching adult, young adults, but also they're not doing it in the most excellent way. Um, I, how I kind of say it is like, you can have good presentation, font and lighting and not be, and not be about Jesus, then that that's worthless. But, and you can have a great Jesus, uh, a great group of people that love Jesus, but also they have like what might seem like culty or what might seem like weird vibes to it, to where it's like, I have no idea what's going on there. Then it's kind of like, hey, they love Jesus. It still doesn't matter on that end, but maybe it could be a little bit more excellent. So I just like to use the word excellent. Why don't you just do both? You know, you have a group of people that love Jesus, but then also they have like they also have like a neat name to it or man, they just make you feel really welcoming and inv like inviting to where like if you're sitting at like a long table, because this is where our young adults were meeting at um, and no offense to these guys when I first came in, but I was like, we can't be meeting in here. You know, they had like a long table with the like white, um, you know, uh, the white like office lights and stuff in a white room. And it was just kind of like, this isn't really welcoming. I kind of feel like I'm in like a, under interrogation or something. So we want to kind of be able to fit that like, hey, go with the vibe, you know, um, that place is a vibe to where they just know that they can come in and they're not going to feel like it's that different from getting together with a group of friends. And you guys know that whenever you go into a home, it feels really homey. You're a lot more relaxed. You're a lot more comfortable, especially in New England. They might be encountering something they've never experienced or seen before. So we just always want to make sure that we're not looking like, like, again, we're not, we're not of this world, but we, but we're in it and we know what people are just genuinely drawn to. So just do things with excellence. 
Um, and I would always leave that to the young adults because usually young adults are pretty good at knowing what a vibe is. And that's why I say, hey, students, you come up with the names. Um, just don't make it cheesy or something. Have a plan and be prepared. Um, I know a lot of groups that can get together and they don't know who's going to be teaching or they don't even know what they're going to be doing. They just get together. And that's not really great because if you're having a scheduled night, you kind of want that point person to say, hey, you know, we're going through our studies and our series in John and I'm going to facilitate this one. Susie's going to facilitate the next one and Gray's going to facilitate the third week. And then the fourth week we had the game night just to where when you have point people and you have a plan and you're prepared, it's not like, OK, well, what's going on here? Know your young adults usually go with how they want to do it, um, which is now like a lot of group discussion. Um, but just also make sure that you're not flying blind because then it'll just start to lose traction and momentum. Um, and that was the other thing, um, uh, you know, just be prepared, be prepared for things that might not look the way that you thought that they might look and it might need to be a little bit more flexible or, Hey, it might need to have a little bit more structure, but it's in the relationship with the leader that you choose. And it might be you, it might be some older people in your church. Just make sure that they're having that give and take with young adults. Hey, what do you want to hear? What do you guys want to go over in the study? Um, or, hey, do you want it to be two weeks teaching and one week game night and one week serving? Or maybe, hey, three weeks games and then one week serving because then now eventually as a community builds, it'll just naturally turn to, hey, you know, we're talking about, geez, how do we do this? So no, you're young adults. Sandy, would there be any questions on, on that end? Nope. Okay. So last but not least, let's talk about content. Um, so yeah, young adults in it, in when you're building the ministry, you kind of want to know uh, what young adults are struggling with in the current era. And I always find that the biggest ways to bring in young adults is to talk about what people need, uh, which is the gospel, number one. And we're never going to water that down, hands down. If anything, that actually will, we're, we're all about quality over quantity. We'd rather have five sold out believers and 10 believers that know that they're wicked and sinful that need a savior than a hundred people that think that they're saved. And yet they'll show up to heaven in Matthew seven and crowd, Lord, Lord, you know, and they won't be enter, uh, They won't be led to the gates of heaven because you say, I never knew you. So with your content, make sure you are always, always, always focusing on the gospel. Number one. And number two, don't always assume everyone's saved in there. Um, you always want to make sure that there's a gospel presentation at the end, but fit it in with current hot topics. Right now, I know politics is a big thing that people don't want to talk a lot about, but in political issues such as LGBTQ+, um, abortion, um, we have, you know, um, uh, just a lot of hot topics today that young adults want to want to hear and that should be taught from our Sunday pulpits but a lot of the time it's not taught it's not talked or taught a lot about with um, with the church body just in conversation. So maybe those are some of the things like you plan out your year and you say, hey, for four months, we're going to go through the study of James, but then also we're going to have a month of hot topics where they can ask any questions and then we address them or we have young adults teach on them. Because again, you want to make sure that you're making young adults take ownership. So it might not always be you and it might be some other people in your church, but try to throw it back to the young adults as often as you can while you're pouring into them and walking them through this process and uh, serve together. That's the other thing. When young adults start to hang out together and serve together, as you guys know, when you get done with the missions trip, you guys are always a lot more bonded. So find maybe ways to be able to get the community to serve together. Maybe you're partnering your church with this college honor society or whatever, and you guys are serving together and you're building relationships that way. That might be something, but specifically with your church young adult group, make sure you are serving. And I'm telling you, when they start to have inside jokes, when they start to build those relationships, it'll be natural for them to just want to be together. And that's what you ultimately want to get is they want to be together, but then also make sure in your young adult ministry, it's not a silo, but to where they're still being plugged into, if they can be, you know, local, uh, like maybe they're meeting with other small groups in your church, or maybe there's still those older people that are wanting to pour into younger people, partner them up, mentor them, um, and that. And then also another way to reach young adults might be social media. 
Um, I know that this is kind of a hard one. I wouldn't even say I'm the best social media guy, but if you guys at least have a social media presence, I remember someone was talking about South Shore Gather, that one ministry that I'm running with the different young adults. And they said, well, hey, you didn't have a website. So I didn't really know much about what was going on. And we have an Instagram page, but that's about it. But a lot of young adults look to the internet first before they'll ever check out something. So make sure that it has a web presence, whether it's on your website, maybe it's an Instagram, but some way for them to say, hey, what's this kind of like, you know, and you're in place a young adult in charge of that. You know, they, they're they really good at that stuff. I feel like I'm more old school. I'd rather honestly just have the flip phone and just call it a day. But uh, so yeah, social media um, is another big thing, but just make sure again, that it's all based on genuine, authentic love for young adults, because if it's going to be fake, if we're just going to be, hey, I don't understand these guys and they kind of stink, but we do need more young adult people in our church. And then hopefully they'll come around to our views and ways. Again, the only views and ways that we want them to see is Jesus Christ. But other than that, hey, it is a relationship. And then also finally, just push them to hang outside of the group, outside of scheduled church times. And this will naturally happen as they flow together. But, you know, if you guys have a, an event on a Thursday night for young adults, maybe afterwards you say, hey, do you guys want to grab shakes after? You know, and I've known that that's been the best and biggest way to build relationships. I just recently um, had a guy that... Um, was checking out our young adult ministry. I didn't really know what to think about it. But then I said, hey, do you want to go bowling with us afterwards? And it was just spontaneous. And then after that bowling night, he, you know, he loves to be there and he'll try to get off work as much as he can to be there. And it's just those simple things. When you're intentional, when you're authentic, at the end of the day, building a young adult ministry, I mean, that's if you really had the resources. But at the end of the day, like what it matters is that they're just a part of the church body. So don't lose yourself if you're if you think that you need to apply all these steps. If you just have young people that are coming into your church and love Jesus, man, yeah, find different ways to connect with them and see if they can get plugged in with other, you know, uh, young adults in your church. But um but yeah, young adult ministry, this could take a year. This could take two years. This could maybe be an overnight thing, but it usually takes, I'd say, two years to build a solid young adult ministry of some young adults. I'm not even saying many, some young adults coming together and saying, hey, we love Jesus. We love being a part of our church body and we love hanging out with other young people that don't have much going on. And it helps just integrate them into the church more. So that's kind of my little spiel. I would definitely say, please check out the first webinar when it comes to young adults in the church. But these were just a little bit of some tips, tricks, and practical steps for that kind of stuff. Love that. Love that. So if you have any questions or comments, put those in the chat um, and uh, we'll shoot them over here to Dominic. So I do have a question. So what happens? You want to start a young adult ministry. You got a couple of young adults. Um you haven't had the opportunity to pour into them yet. So how do you go about, you know, um, doing the content when you're not quite sure whether you should just hand over the reins there? Yeah. So with that, usually it's kind of like we, we are going to be the touch, the touch point to where like in, let's say you have a church with no young adults, um, but there's some that are grandkids or kids or maybe around the area. Maybe what you do is you just kind of send something out. It's like, Hey, this Thursday night, we're going to, we're going to, I don't know, it'd be, you know, we're going to have a game night or we're all going to go bowling, you know, beyond the church or whatever, and just be here Thursday at 6 PM. And just make sure you have some of your church people there to just be able to build those relationships. And that's the hard part is you just have to know kind of who you're dealing with or not even know who you're dealing with. Just know who's around you. And when you know who's around you, kind of then have those foundations, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. And it may go into the same question. So um, Matt's asking, do you have any strategies for connecting to young adults who don't normally attend and who don't have strong connections with, who they don't have strong connections with? Yeah. So, uh, I, I, so, that kind of, I try to, so for instance, there's this, there's this kid in our church and he comes with his grandma and he's not plugged into church whatsoever. He doesn't really care to be there, but I know, but I went up to him church one day and I said, Hey, you know, Greg, I'm just going to call him Greg. Hey, Greg, you know, um, I've seen you coming a couple of times, man. And I don't know if we've ever met before. Uh, tell me a little bit about what you do. And I found out he's really into robotics and he's really into drones. So for me, I'm like, well, hey, and I've always been interested in drones. I'm like, well, that sounds pretty cool. 
why don't we go grab a coffee? And I know that there's another student that's that's pretty big into robotics and something. I'm like, hey, do you mind if I bring my friend Christian with us? He's big into robotics and maybe we could talk about this stuff and boom. So uh, d- the strategies for connecting to young adults, it's going to vary. It kind of really depends on who you are as well. Because if you're not an extrovert, again, maybe you're going to have to step out of your shell. But for me, I just say, I wish someone would come up to me in church and just ask me what I'm interested in and just get to know me as a person. And then from that, I'm like, well, man, he's interested in me. What's that about? And then when I show that, hey, we go, we show up for coffee and we're hanging out and we're cool. Okay, well, hey, there's a touch point to where next Sunday I see him. Hey, man, how was your robotics competition or something? So those, so that's the personal strategy. The second strategy that I would say is you can always try marketing. You can always try brochures or community events, that kind of stuff. But just young adults are, it's very rare for them to ever see a flyer or something on social media that's put on by a church and say, oh, I'm going to go to that, you know? So that's why I say the strategies are getting on campus, getting on school campus, which is extremely hard. But again, you're never saying we're going to take, it's always give. I just met with our local church, uh, our local our local school board, and then I'm trying to get onto this one college campus. And I just said, hey, you know, I'm just a young guy that... Um, you know, it has a little bit of resources, but if you guys need anything, even if it's an extra guy to come in and help with the track team, or if it's a guy to take out trash, let me know and I will be there. And boom, that has actually got me into some places where I never thought I would be. And I've been able to connect with some people. So it's, again, it's relational, it's personal. You can try marketing, social media and all that, but mm-hmm. it's not going to stick. Right. And I do like the idea of uh, college campuses uh, because um, you, if you, especially campuses where they have already a ministry. And so a lot of college campuses are looking for local churches to partner with. So yes. I know that's a big strategy um, with the collegiate ministry at the BCNE. So that might be another option. You might want to connect uh, with collegiate ministry at the BCNE and see if uh, they can connect you at one of the college campuses that might nearby. Because I, I love your idea of, uh, what do you call it, care packages or, mm-hmm. you know, even just send them, you know, cases of granola bars so that they can feed the students or whatever and um and just let them know label them you know hey this is a gift from brookville bible church i mean you know they may see it and they may come and they may not but at least they know that um you know that that there is a local church that cares yeah yeah with those school campus ones on college campus school campus the thing is like you never want to go in there and like take it over. You just want to say, can right. I be, can I buy, can I buy pizza for you guys at one point and show up? And from there, they've invited me. I've been able to bring pizzas and just sit down and talk with some young adults. And some are plugged into church, which is great. And some are still figuring out their faith. And we don't want to say, Hey, come to Mark, come to our church, come to our church. But there's a piece that they're like, well, Hey, where do you go? And you bring pizza. Well, Hey, let me, let me try out yours, you know? So uh, that's another way to connect. Um, and that's just been reaped benefits before. Yeah. So somebody's asking what type of um, events or fun fellowship things have you done that really connected with your group? Yeah. So it's funny because when I first got to my church in California, um, there, there was a sense that we need to put on a huge event. You know, we needed to have a band and a rock climbing wall. And I just said, ah, I just don't know about that because we had some young adults in the church that weren't connecting. So the, one of the coolest events that we ever did was go putt-putting, you know? And from that, boom, people that... So like one of the coolest events I think I've ever done was putt-putting or going bowling, the most simple things you can think of. I know our current group loves board games to where we'll just have a board game night and they invite their friends to it. So like there's that piece, I would say as well. Um, So really keep the event simple. And yeah, try out a band. If you if your church has resources or something and, you know, hey, try out a band. But in that, I bet that might get some traction and stuff. But at the end, it's it's the relational things. If I can bring my friend and it won't be awkward or I'll at least know this one person. 
So I would say those are the big ones. Very relational. Go grab a shake. Those are those are my favorite. Yep, yep. And so somebody else say they say they have a young adult ministry and they've been meeting regularly for a while, but they haven't seen any growth in the numbers and it's become a close knit friend group. And so you know what would you say to guide them to how to encourage for those to branch out? Yeah, so this is one thing that I've been working on with our current group. Mm -hmm. um, I think what it really comes down to is you have to, because you never want it to be a click. When, you're, when your um, young adult ministry starts to become a click, there mm -hmm. starts to be a piece of like, and no one is as invited because you kind of lose focus for what the group was formed for. The group was formed, of course, to find community and relationship and be integrated with your church body, but also you're called to reach your peers. So in that, what I would always recommend is sitting down with them and saying, hey, I love that you guys are so close. Like that is a blessing. Um, I wish that was uh, more of the case in our church as well, because that's what we're trying to foster right now. And uh, number one, it takes time. So if you're not seeing growth, it takes time, even if you are doing the right steps. But to say, hey, what? why aren't we reaching out? Maybe you do need, maybe you haven't, maybe it's adding more game nights or another service event, whatever that might be. But make sure you remind them of the mission is, hey, we're called to go there for and make disciples. And maybe keep thinking of one person. Don't make it too big. Don't say, hey, we're going to reach this entire college campus at the end of the mm -hmm. year. Maybe you can make their goal, but always do practical steps. And what I always tell our people is, is there one person you're thinking of that you that you know just needs a good friend group that needs Jesus? And this would be a great opportunity to invite them in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I that's a good point is making sure that you're casting your vision for them. Yes. You know, yes. because I think you need to continue to cast the vision. You know, why are we meeting? And I love the idea of, of, of uh, you know, challenging them. As you say, one person, you know, just let's all pray for that one person, that yeah. one person that we have and, and, you know, invite them and see what the Lord will do. Yeah, we always talk about our mission statement. So like for our my youth, for the oh, youth okay. ministry, for instance, like every single Wednesday we get together, it is always, we, uh, we gather to create spiritually mature leaders that integrate with the church body, that integrate with the community and have a general uh -huh. Bible knowledge. So these students always know that we're coming to be spiritually, or we want to be more spiritually mature. And in that we want to be integrated with our church, we want to be integrated with our community, and we want to know what our Bible mm -hmm. says. For our young adult ministry, it's a little bit different, a little bit sure. of a different take because we're more uh, ministering to those that don't have a young adult group in their church. It's we gather to refresh, equip, and be sent back to our local church body. So, so yeah, I would say always say your mission statement every time you get together. Um, and that just has always helped us kind of find and know why we do what we do. And if we ever forget or if we're ever starting to grow too close and we're not seeing other people and they're more comfortable and content more than wanting to see people lost, it's like, hey, do you remember the reason that we gather? That's a good point. That's a very good point because it, you know, and it maybe needs to be part of that branding. So. Yeah, name has a lot of power in that as well. Yeah. Um, so, hey, it can be included in your name as well. Cool. Cool. That's good stuff. Thank you so much, Dominic. This is, was really very helpful. 